Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today after a long long period of time without any reviews we're finally back in the garage and today we're looking at the M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo tier 6 American medium tank. I've already reviewed the tank that comes before this in the tech tree, the M4 Sherman which was a bloody amazing tank and I had a hell of a good time driving it and after that you come to the M4 A3 E2 tier 6 tank. I'm playing this tank to get to the T110 E5 which is absolutely amazing and I absolutely love it. You've basically got two ways to get to the T29 which leads on to tier 10 which is either at tier 5 you get the T1 heavy and go down heavy tanks with the M6 and then finally reaching the T29 or you choose to take mediums playing the M4 and the M4 A3. The advantage of this line is that first of all this tank here is better than the M6 at least in my opinion yours might differ and uh, the second advantage is that from here tier 6 you can also go to the medium tanks and up to the M48 pattern and you don't have to split up into two different grinds at tier 5, you can split up at tier 7 which is quite a bonus. However there are drawbacks as well or mainly there are, yeah, there are two drawbacks I'd say or let's say three drawbacks. The first one is that if you look at it the T29 costs 42,070 experience points if you research it from the M6. So remember this number, 42,000. If we research it from the M4A3, um, however, it costs 55.5 thousand. That's a lot more. That's over 10,000 experience more if you research it from the M4A3. So that's quite a significant difference. The second difference is that the top gun on the M4A3 is the 76mm M1A2, which is the stock gun on the T29. And I bet it really sucks to play the T29 with this gun and grind out the experience for the next gun because this gun has only got 150 millimeters of penetration which is absolutely crap at tier 7. If you think of it, the T29 will face tier 9 vehicles. 150 millimeters of penetration, forget it. However, if you play the M6, you already unlock the 90 millimeter gun on the M6 and that makes the grind on the T29 a lot easier. So, mm, which tank is better? Well, the M4A3 E2 is the better tank, but is it the better tank to get? Um, well, it's up to you really. I decided to get this tank because I also want to go down this line here in time, and I really love the M4, so uh, yeah, that's basically why I decided to go down here. Another thing is that if you train your crew up already on the T1 and the M6, then uh, retraining them for the T29 won't set the experience level back as much as if you retrain them from the M4 because the M4 is a medium tank and the M6 is a heavy tank and retraining uh, if you switch tank classes while retraining uh, your crew will lose a lot more of their experience so that's another drawback so yeah probably in retrospect I probably would rather go down this line here and get the M6 but it's too late now and I don't really like the Sherman Jumbo all that much. It's alright, it's not a bad tank, but it's not very, very great or something like that. And I have a quick look at the stats. 760 hit points is quite a lot for a tier 6 medium tank. If we look at the KV-1S, it's only got 50 hit points more and it's a heavy tank. So this is quite a big hit point pool. It's also quite heavy for a tier 6 medium weighing 38.5 tons but the engine is kind of not all that powerful uh, in comparison to the weight which means that the power to weight ratio is 15.49 which isn't bad but it's not amazing don't expect this tank to go at high speeds the top speed only is 35 kph 
and the traverse speed is pretty good with 32 degrees per second but it's not amazing the turret traverse speed is quite good but that's only with the upgraded turret and yeah the speed maneuverability is kind of the downside of this tank or one of the downsides it's got some others as well but now we come to the armor and the armor is definitely an amazing plus it's got 100 millimeters of frontal hull armor and look at that slope at tier 6 that's ridiculous you'll actually have good chances of bouncing even the 122 millimeter shots of a kv1s if you angle your tank about at this angle here the armor is very very good and 76 millimeters of side armor is not bad however it isn't angled whatsoever so when angling your tank you don't want to expose more of your side than about this probably but coming round corners and angling your frontal hull while coming round the corner is super effective in this tank you will bounce a lot of shots and your rear armor is obviously garbage now the turret armor might not look all that good 76 at the front 50 at the sides 50 at the rear but it's got a very very sturdy gun mantle and one well, the turrets are very interesting on this tank if we have a look at the research it can choose between two turrets you've got the upgraded turret and the stock turret the stock turret has got a lot more armor than the upgraded turret which means that well is the upgraded turret actually an upgrade it's actually got exactly twice as much armor as the upgraded turret so this is a lot more armor and it's got that amount of armor all the way round so the armor is very very good but in turn it's got pretty bad traverse speed compared to the upgraded turret and the view range is very very bad so uh all in all i went with this uh upgraded turret because it also allows you to fit the better gun so all in all i'd say the tier 6 turret is better than the tier 5 turret but well you could argue that it's actually a downgrade and the upgraded gun is not that much better from the gun you already unlock on the m4 sherman um one interesting thing about this turret however is the 370 meters view range that's a lot of view range at tier 6 that's a good view range at tier 7 so you can do some good spotting actually in this tank if you get into position quickly but don't get me wrong this tank will never be a scout so uh, yeah next we'll have a look at the guns and uh, this tank can choose from two guns mainly um two 76 millimeter guns and they are both very similar the m1a1 and the m1a2 gun the upgrade gun has got an, a lot faster rate of fire but the same penetration and the same damage the penetration is pretty low 128 is well it's not extremely bad at tier 6 but you can have problems when you meet higher tier opponents the alpha damage is very low but com um, combined with a very very good rate of fire this tank's got excellent dpm let's see if we can get the number 2091 damage per minute that's a lot the accuracy is also improved with the upgraded gun but it's not great point for accuracy is pretty bad and the aiming time 2.3 seconds is not amazing but it's all right so yeah the gun is kind of a letdown of this tank i feel it's not a bad gun in tier 6 games but in tier 7 and 8 games you can have real big problems penetrating your enemies what other stats have we got left um, only the signal range really we've talked about all the rest 615 signal range is quite a lot for tier 6 but you know it's not that important the signal range really especially not with this tank so um let's discuss some tactics what i would do with this vehicle is definitely try to get your dpm to work always make sure to angle your tank like this this vehicle has got excellent gun depression and your good gun mantlet will allow you to easily go hold down when coming over ridge tops and so on and easily engage enemies like that and let them bounce a lot of shots off this really sturdy gun mantle i would try not to trade shots with stuff like a kv1s or other heavy tanks because of your low alpha damage try to engage other medium or light tanks try to engage 
enemies at a lower tier than you or same tier and try to avoid engagements with higher tier tanks than yourself because you probably won't be able to penetrate them. Try to avoid shooting at long ranges just because of your very bad accuracy and you're not all that great aiming time. So I try to get into situations where this tank can put its DPM to work, try to um, catch enemy tanks in the open where they can't retreat behind cover and just hammer them with your DPM and you should be fine, especially because lower tier tanks and same tier tanks will bounce a lot of shots of your armour. Um, as for equipment, I'd fit vents, as I have here, they're very cheap and pretty effective. I'd also get a vertical stabiliser, if you can afford it, and a uh, gun lane drive. Those are the three bits of equipment I'd go with. You could also get Binox or Coated Optics to improve the very good view range in this tank and make it to a very, very good spotter. But I think you would probably get more benefit out of a vertical stabilizer than out of a uh, view range extending device. Okay, so that brings us on to crew skills. First of all, I train repairs up on the entire crew because repairs is very important on this tank. Um, after that, well, you could, let's see, for the commander, um, obviously you can go for six cents. Or if you decide to fit uh, Binox, you should probably go with Recon because that will extend your maximum view range, which is very good combined with Binox. And of course, six cents is not bad at all. Then for your gunner, you probably want to get Snapshot to improve your aiming time. For the driver, I would go with off-road driving to improve the maneuverability of this tank, which is kind of a letdown. For the radio operator, uh, after you've trained repairs, go with situational awareness to improve your view range. And the loader, uh, safe storage is a good idea on any vehicle, really. So, um, having discussed that, let's head into some gameplay. And um, before we head into battle, I just have to quickly apologize because I've had some good games in this tank, but uh, all my 8.7 replays have been rendered useless by patch 8.8, .8, so I fear I can't show them to you, so I've got just gameplay in 8.8 .8 that I had yesterday. I hope that will do for you, but maybe it just shows, shows off how this tank performs in a just normal average battle. So that's head in. So here we are on El Halouf and uh, I'm platooned up with my friend Redwood Forest uh, in his Hellcat. This is a very, very, very tier 6 game. Uh, all tanks now are team are tier 6 and our enemies have only got two tier 4 tanks. The rest of them are tier 6 as well. So actually the odds are stacked against our enemies because they've got two tier 6s less than us. So that's what we can make of this game. Now you can see, first of all, me driving like an absolute retard, but <laughs> um, yes, except for that you can see me heading to this uh, corner up here at A1, A2, together with another uh, American tier 6 medium tank, the EZ8, which is the other choice for tier 6 medium tank, which it's basically armoured more lightly, but uh, therefore it's more speedy and so on. So uh, I'm heading up here because I can put my excellent gun mantlet and the good gun depression to work on this corner and go hold down and take out enemies that might be there. Now this is a very good matchup for this tank because the fact that it only has to shoot at tier 6 tanks means that its bad penetration doesn't really matter that much. So, let's see. Oh, good. We get a shot with that Cromwell, but he also gets a shot at us. And luckily, the T-34-85 bounces from us, but that isn't that surprising because our armor just is that good. So... We miss that shot due to our very bad accuracy. But you can see the reload on this gun is just insane. I don't think that shot hit Evo. Maybe it ricocheted, I'm not sure. It was a very, very weird angle. Okay, he takes our gun out. I repair it. Because 
having bad accuracy and the taking out gun is not good at all. So can we finish this guy off? Yes we can. That's our first kill and the score is 5 to 1. Can we finish the comment off? Oh good. Double kill. But now there's an SC100 there. He's got a very dangerous 122mm gun which can really hurt us. Although maybe he's not using... Yeah, he's not got the best gun. That's good. He's still using the gun that the SU85 uses. That's very unlucky there. We bounce off his gun mantle. And now our ammunition rack goes, but I can't repair it. But the excellent reload time of this gun means that even with the damaged ammo rack, we can still take out that Hellcat probably. Now, he can one-shot us, but we can one-shot him as well. And yes, good. So that's our third kill, and we secured this ridge here. Now, that was a very tricky situation against that Hellcat. I have to be careful with that uh, 88 there. Ah, uh, yeah, I missed. And uh, now you see me loading APCR. I always start quite a bit of APCR when I go into battle with this tank just because of the bad penetration. But if you think that with APCR you'll be able to absolutely troll everything, you're pretty mistaken because if we mouse over the APCR ammo, we can see it's only got 177 millimeters of penetration, which is very, very good at tier 8. But still, you can see we're bouncing off as 88. And in tier 7 and 8 games, 177mm of penetration isn't that good at all. So, even with premium ammunition, this tank has got real problems um, working tier 8 and 7 tanks. So, right now I'm on very low health and I'm kind of pinned down here because that 88 could one shot me. But I'm just making a run for it, hoping that I survive. And yes, I do. Okay, that was lucky. The score's 10 to 3. We've got this in the bar bag. Oh, that was weird. Barg? <laughs> no, I mean bag. Okay, so, um, a bit of a brain fart there. <laughs> so, oh god, this is gonna be. Sh oh, good. We really had to fire that one clutch because we're on that low health. And there's a Jackson Tier 6 American Tank Destroyer. I don't think that tank's that good really, but still, we're on very, very low health, and he's probably got a dangerous gun. Apparently, it's very rapidly firing, so we have to take this guy out. We've got a Type 58 along with us, but our ammo rack is blown, as you know. So, okay, we really, I really hope that we can take this guy out. I'm just drawing back, so that he has to come around the corner, and oh yeah, that was so close, but we get the fifth kill. And now only the Hellcat is left. And, um, yeah, that was it. So, nice game there, and uh, I'm afraid that's the only game I've got for you today, because, as I said, all my 8.7 games are rendered useless by the 8.8 .8 patch. So, I'm sorry for that, but um, still we can have a look at the after-game stats of this one. So, here's the post-battle results screen. You can see we got 25,651 credits and just short of 1,400 experience. And we finished second of the team after the Hellcat in experience earned and in damage done with the Hellcat scoring twice as much as us. He had a really good game. But still, we picked up 5 kills and scored just beneath 1,000 damage, which is quite a lot. We fired 21 shots, of which 16 hit, um, and 13 penetrated. Now, that's a pretty good rate, but you have to rem remember that we were only shooting at very lightly armoured tanks, and this was a tier 6 game. I already said that we scored 1,200 damage, we received 7 hits of which only 5 penetrated, still that's kind of disappointing really, with only 2 ricochets. Uh, we received 1,245 potential damage though, though which is quite a lot, uh, because this tank's only got 760 HP. And we damaged 6 enemies and killed 5, and uh, 65 spotting damage was done thanks to us, which is pretty nice. We couldn't keep all that much of our credits because we fired a few premium rounds, which are quite expensive. So, um, yeah, let's head back to the garage for a summary. 
So, the M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo Tier 6 American Medium Tank, what do I think of it? Yeah, it's a pretty decent, sturdy little tank, and I enjoy playing it. It's, like, I'm not getting all excited about it, because, like, it kind of lacks the speed to become one of my favourite tanks and the penetration. If it had one of those two, then this would be an absolutely amazing tank. The way it is, it's alright, it's decent, and if you can set a DPM to work, and if you can get hold down, if you can angle your armor correctly, then this tank is quite a lot of fun and I can recommend it. It's basically up to you whether you choose to go get the M6 or the Sherman Jumbo on your way to the American Heavies. I would still say that the M4A32 is the better tank, but the grind is a lot easier with the M6. So, uh, yeah, it's up to you basically. And, um, yeah... As I said, I like this tank, and I'm not going to keep it because it's not absolutely amazing, but it's good, and I hope this review gave you a fairly good idea of how this tank performs and what its, what its strengths and weaknesses are. If it did, consider giving it a thumbs up below, or even subbing to my channel, I would appreciate it a lot. And uh, check out my Facebook page if you want to, a link to it is in the description below. And yeah, thanks for watching again, I hope I'll see you in one of my next videos, and bye bye